name is David Rooney and I'm a professor of chemical engineering at Queen's University Belfast. I think I've always been an engineer. I've always been curious about how things work and what I can do with that knowledge. Even as a child, I would dream of finding an advanced piece of technology which would provide me with the answer to any question I asked. Roll on a few decades and my dream seems to have come true. I can now speak to my computer, my phone, or even my watch and ask it anything. But if I was to ask Google, how do I solve global challenges? It would respond with over 400 million suggestions, enough reading for several thousand years. On reflection, maybe I should have dreamt of having the wisdom to know the right questions to ask, as well as understand the answers. Knowing the right question to ask would be very useful. The American inventor Charles Kettering once said, a problem well stated is a problem half solved. The idea being that once properly framed, you can apply knowledge and skill to produce a solution. I cover this in my own teaching and it works. Sketch out the problem, see the connections, apply the tools, and you're done. But what about those really big challenges? The types of challenges that come when we set out to design, support, and deliver a sustainable future for all. These challenges are hugely complex, interconnected, interdependent. Even attempts to propose a solution requires more skill, more awareness, something more nuanced than anything that's come before. Instead of thinking of these challenges as a treasure hunt trying to find that X within a formula, we need to think of them as complex systems connecting people, nature and technology. We need to take the ideas behind systems thinking, uh, sprinkle in some chaos theory, behavioral science, creativity. It's certainly not clear to where to begin, but making those first steps is important. They're important because all 17 of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals are a complex mix of economic, social, and environmental sustainability issues. Number seven on that list is clean and affordable energy. Energy, at least to me, is critical. If you can secure a supply of clean, affordable, and plentiful energy, you can do a lot more than just turn on the lights. You can purify contaminated water, take that water and turn it into hydrogen, take that hydrogen and air and make fertilizer, and so on. My own research centers on energy. It started with vegetable oils, moved into crude oils, and now focuses on bioenergy and zero carbon systems. Carbon, well, carbon has become probably the most well-known, if not infamous, element on the periodic table, rising up the watch lists of governments around the world. Yet at the same time, carbon is the basic building block of life. We are all carbon powered, but we have overconsumed, leading to global impacts. A balance needs to be struck. Nature needs carbon, we need carbon, but unlike the rest of nature, we do need to go on a carbon diet. It can all be quite confusing. The idiom at sixes and sevens is a term used to represent a state of confusion, a disagreement between parties. It is coincidental that carbon, number six on the periodic table, is at odds with energy, number seven, on the list of sustainable development goals. Even more coincidental when six is added to seven, you get 13, the number given to climate change on that same list. We can, of course, disconnect carbon from energy, and we are making great progress. The cost of wind and solar and geothermal and tidal energy is dropping. The installed capacity of these renewable sources increasing. As a result, our addiction to cheap carbon is waning. But these are all still technological tools, the relatively low-hanging fruit of the zero carbon journey. Having tools does help, but we also need to know what to do with them. At home, I have a box filled with widgets and spare parts, things left over from long forgotten projects. Beside it sits my toolbox, filled with spanners and screwdrivers, drill bits and saws of various sizes. 
when I have a new and unfamiliar problem to solve and initiate that treasure hunt for a solution, I find myself searching through that box of widgets for inspiration. I already know the types of tools I'll need. What I'm looking for is how to put it all together. My treasure hunt does not start off by looking for the X on the map. It starts by looking for the map itself. Making maps takes science and technical skill, as well as design and aesthetics. It presents complex information clearly and has helped people over the centuries to plan their own journeys into the unknown. Mapping out the terrain of zero carbon is similar. It too also requires more than just science and equations. For example, I already know that when it comes to energy conversion, a wind turbine is so much more efficient than a tree, but I still see beauty in a tree. I know there is economic value trapped up in a range of carbon-rich materials, yet in society we too often just casually throw them away. We do need to understand how and why and what we value. But clearly money isn't everything, and yet, we know our journey is going to be expensive. Who will invest in our zero carbon expedition, knowing that their investment is at serious risk? The more complex the journey, the higher the risk, particularly if nature is going to be involved. And yet, there are financial tools which embrace risk. Tools whereby contracts are created, giving stability and confidence to investors. Stability in business is good, but again, this has to be more than just business. In his TEDx talk, Edward Freeman speaks about how business is about purpose, the importance of ethics and stakeholders, the idea that we all just get on better together when we are aligned in terms of what we want to achieve. When we bring all of these ideas together, it starts to reveal a terrain which is in balance with nature and technology and economics and value and purpose. When it comes to zero carbon, what we want to achieve is balance. Perhaps contracts with nature which are focused on mutual benefit, adding value and return on our shared investment. Engineering has always been about adding value to society. And zero carbon engineering is no different. What we need now is a new generation of engineers, clever people who can combine their own awareness and skills to give them the wisdom to know the right questions to ask, to understand the answers, and to draw out a new map for our sustainable future. Thank you.